Hello everybody, Jamie here from FM Scout. Today's video, I am bringing you another nap tactic test, this time for the underdogs. So if you're managing a team and you happen to find yourself as an underdog in that league, this is the perfect tactic for you. This is Sicilian 442, which plays with your two defensive midfielders. It's an underdog tactic, it's very direct style. As you've seen on the screen, it's a 442. And the Nap, what Nap did with this one, he went 104 goals with only 25 conceded. So as I just said, if you find yourself you've just been promoted to the Premier League or, or a top league in any nation, and you're looking for that bit of security at the back and to try and shut them top teams out, this is a great opportunity to do so. Don't forget, all the Nap tactics can be downloaded on the FM Scout website. Link is in the description and you can go to the nap tactic table, find what suits you, have a look what style suits you, find out what shape you want, or if you want to just do an underdog or an elite team, everything is available on the naps tactic table. But let's have a little look at the tactic now. So as I said before, it's a 4-4-2. This is generally the team that we're going to go for that we may change strikers around. So we've got four strikers who are generally quite good I mean obviously you've got Balotelli as well you've got Donnarumma up front so we might change these around depending but as always we do with our test we always make sure that injuries suspensions are removed throughout the season just so we can get a good idea if Tenali gets injured on the first day then the tactic test is pretty much over again it's down to you guys to bring in the sufficient depth should one of your players get injured well you can see we go with a sweeper keeper we've got two wing backs on automatic two ball playing defenders on defend you've also got two dms on support with your two wingers on attack and then your two pressing forwards the mentality is attacking if you want to look at the in possession you've got pass into space overlap on your left and your right you play out defense you work ball into box your run at defense and more direct in regards to your passing in transition now you've got counter press along with counter distribute to your fullbacks and throw it long so looking at your in possession which has got your overlapping your play out defense and then looking at your in transition the wingers and the wing backs are going to be a vital part i'm hoping we can see a lot of assists from both parties in terms of the wingers and the wing backs on your outer possession as always it wouldn't be a nap tactic without it a much higher line of engagement i'm just waiting for the for the comments is there a tactic without a much higher line of engagement you've also got your high defensive line you're very narrow you've got tighter marking extremely urgent pressing prevent short goal kick distribution and get stuck in if we have a little look at the player instructions now i know a lot of people was requesting this before but you've got your sweeper keeper you have got take fewer risks and tackle harder your wing back has got a lot i'll let you pause the video if you want to just obviously have a look and put them onto your game then your let's have a look at the other wing back actually the other wing back has got the exact same now your ball playing defenders both have the same in pass it shorter now let's have a look at the dms so you've got nothing on your left dm and you've got nothing on your right dm how about the wingers the wingers have got both the exact same as well pass it shorter shoot less often tackle harder and mark tighter and finally take fewer risks at the top on the left pressing forwards and a few more on the right pressing forward so pass it shorter take fewer risks shoot less often and roam from positions now let's have a look if we've got any corner tactics so you can see there's a left it's called left good so i'm assuming it should be good right so that's installed on your left but if you want to copy it onto your fm touch here is the screen and then your right is the same thing as well just changed around and then if we go to attack you've got the beer wolf for the attack in the corners which again is a short corner and then the right is the exact exact same by the looks of it yep the right is the exact same just the positions change around how about free kicks we have actually got some free kick defending so you've got a defensive free kick tactic routine on this and the right you've also got a right one you even have a attack routine on the left and a attack routine on the right so really interesting and then i'm going to assume you've got nothing for the defend for the defending throws but you have your long throws for your left and your right but the question is as you can see it's going to be an interesting test because these are predicted to finish 19th in the league for me anything above 10th is is really incredible there's some big teams as you can see in the league as you all know but let's go forward now 
a year and let's see what we do in this test i'm hoping we can see a lot of involvement from the wingers a lot of involvement from the wing backs and maybe we might not concede 25 like nap did firstly what a experiment this has been i mean the team predicted 19th i've finished fifth and they finished in the europa league already this is a massive success though we did concede 49 goals so but on top of that we you know we scored 72 which was higher than roma so really really good let's be honest you can't fault that whatsoever a chance for europa league a chance for more money if you are a lower league team and i'm assuming a lot of you looking at this tactic will be in the similar boat to probably what brescia is right so yeah really good let's go on to the squad now though Let's have a look where the goals came from firstly. So you had 20 goals for Mario Balotelli in 36 appearances. You had 11 goals for Donnarumma, 9, and then a few more, obviously a little bit down. Romulo on the right-hand side got 9. I'm more intrigued about the assists. So let's have a look at the players we were talking about. Let's go to the left winger first. Now, this season, he got 13 assists. So a really good amount of assists for the left-handed side of player. And then Romulu on the right, how many assists did he get? F only five assists, which is surprising. I'm intrigued about the wingbacks more than anything right now. So Sabelli, he managed to get five assists. And then the guy on the left, Martella, he managed to get zero assists. So very interesting. But in terms of your kind of your goals, your appearances, you can see the players. How about Tonali, the, the wonder kid? 7.38 rating in Serie A which three goals and six assists, so really, really good as well. And you can see it was overall, it was a really good experiment for the players. But I want to delve a little bit more into the stats. So if we go to Serie A, you can see, I mean, Bal Balotelli finished on, on, on third place in 19 goals, almost second place, to be fair. He was never going to beat Ronaldo. And you can see we actually got the highest assist in that season, only 17 yellow cards. If we go over now, let's have a look at some of the fixtures. So you can see any anything notable. I mean, the first game we lost to Atalanta. You've got a, a good win against Bologna, 3-0. We lost 5-1 to Juventus, unfortunately. But again, this tactic, you're not going to win the league if you've got a team predicted right at the bottom. That's a given, right? You just want to survive. You want to try and over over exceed your, your prediction. That's the whole point. We lost 1-0 to Napoli. Uh, we had a 5-4 win over Lazio, a 7-1 win over Sampdoria, which is incredible. We had a little bit of a bad spell right here, but we wasn't dropping that many points. We did drop points against Juventus. And then Hellas Verona, 4-1, 1-0, 2-0 against them. Lazio, 4-0, and Sampdoria, 3-0, before losing the last two games against Torino and Milan. So, I mean, overall, a bit of a mixed bag in regards to the, the, the results. But, I mean, the table speaks for itself. We finished fifth. But let's go and have a look now at some of the important statistics throughout this season. If we go to the detailed possession, you're always going to be the bottom possession when you're playing an underdog tactic. Uh, I'm surprised we finished 18th, to be fair. I was expecting a 20th. Um, anything else that really stands out, let's go through them. So, obviously, goals. We finished third on goals. Though. I mean, when you score more than Inter Milan, you score more than Lazio, you score more than Roma, and you score more than AC you know you've got a pretty good tactic. On top of that, you also scored more than Napoli and Fiorentina. We did have the best pass completion ratio, though. Better than all the teams in the league. 27% crosses completed. We finished third on that, 366. And goals from corners, we finished eighth. We had five goals from corners. Best uh, pass completion ratio, we was at the bottom, but we're always at the bottom on that. Passes completed will be at the bottom as well. Only 9,000 completed. When you look at Inter, who had 18,000, yet we finished above them. So it's pretty crazy. Chances created, though. 157 chances created in 9,000 passes. That says a lot. Shots on target ratio, 52%. Shots on target, 369, just behind Juventus. So, I mean, overall, a really good experiment. I mean, the conceded, 8th eighth, eighth conceded. Really good for a team predicted 19th. And yeah, that's been the end of the video. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. Make sure you let me know in the comments if you are going to give this tactic a go and you are just struggling to survive in the Premier League or any other league for that matter. Just let me know in the comments. You know, let me know and I'll reply and I'll see you all next time. Goodbye, everybody.